let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of our various measures of central tendency. So again, the measures of central tendency are the mode, the median, and the mean. The mode being uh, the most common uh, answer uh, in a particular variable. The median being the middle, uh, if we put them all in a line uh, in, a, in an ordinal way, and so 50% of the answers are equal to or above the median, 50% are equal to or below the median, and the mean is the average, the arithmetic mean, the average answer. Um, so the one maybe we were most familiar with is the mean, right? the average. We often talk about the average this, the average that. We're very familiar with the mean, and it's the one we probably use the most in IO psychology um, for a number of reasons. The most important one is that the mean can be manipulated uh, algebraically. We can do things with the mean. We can take the mean of a bunch of means, right? So we can take the average mean across a number of different samples, uh, the mean of the mean to the grand mean. Um, we can, uh, you know, we can add to and subtract from the mean. Uh, we can compare means. We can divide the mean by certain things. Um, we can manipulate algebraically in a meaningful way. Of course, all of these are numbers, so we can always do something with them. Um, but in particular, the mean can be algebraically manipulated in a meaningful way. So that's probably its primary advantage. The um, it's also relatively stable across different samples. And what do I mean by that is if I have a population uh, and I'm pulling samples out of the population, for the most part, the mean of each of those samples will be similar to, uh, and therefore a pretty good estimate of, the mean of the entire population. Now this isn't perfectly true, and we're gonna talk about that later, but um, particularly if I big, draw bigger and bigger samples, um, they are most likely to, uh, to at least approximate or it'd be more or less stable across all of these different samples. So that's an important thing. And of course the mean is used for, uh, can be used for our interval and ratio data, which is most of our data that we use unless we do very qualitative uh, types of analysis. But in terms of quantitative analysis, most of what we do is with interval data uh, or what we presume to be interval data and so the mean is uh, perfectly usable there. The biggest disadvantage of the mean is the effect of extreme scores on the mean, right? So if we draw a histogram, uh, right, of scores, and, and obviously they're not normally smooth. In fact, they, they would never be smooth. The histogram being essentially like a bar chart, right? And so this is what a uh, number of people say, right? And so, I don't know, this kind of looks like something like, like this. Right, and the mean is probably somewhere around here. But if I add a very extreme value, something over here, that will have an effect of moving the mean pretty dramatically sometimes towards that, especially it's almost like a moment thing. The further out it goes, the more it might move the mean, and certainly the more I have at these extreme values. So the mean is very susceptible uh, to extreme values, especially at smaller sample sizes. And so the mean can be problematic, especially in the presence of uh, very extreme values. So the mean is not the only measure of central tendency that we use. We also use uh, the median. And again, the median is 50% of the sample lies above the mean, the median, 50% lies below the median. The, um, the primary advantage of the median is that it's not affected by extreme scores, right? So adding one more additional extreme score, while it will have a fairly dramatic, comparatively dramatic effect on the mean, uh, it'll have a relatively nominal effect on the, nominal, a small effect on the median. It'll only move it by one place, right? And so um, it is not as affected uh, by extreme scores. So when we have, for instance, uh, a very skewed distribution, Right, something like this with lots of lots of stuff out in the tail, or even more skewed than that. Right, where we have something that's just very skewed. Right, and so a uh, classic case of this is when we talk about income. You usually don't hear about average income for an area. You hear about the median income because there's usually a lot of extreme values in the in in that sample of income, and so each extreme value has only a very while it does move the median to the right. Uh, it only has a very uh, small effect as compared to the mean. So that's the primary uh, advantage uh, that it has. 
Um, and it's also, it, it's applicable to ordinal data in a way that the mean isn't, right? And so the mean uh, doesn't really mean much in ordinal data. In fact, the mean and the median, I guess, are the same thing. It, like, there's no applic applicability to it. Um, for ordinal data, we can use, we can calculate a median, right? It's the, it's the middle, it's the 50th percentile uh, place, right? So if we have uh, 10 numbers, uh, then five, you know, is kind of that whatever's in fifth place is still the median, whether that's uh, interval or uh, ordinal data. So um, that's important. A disadvantage of the median is it actually changes quite a bit sample to sample. So if I take a sample out of the population, take multiple samples out of the population, unlike the mean, the median is not very stable. It'll move quite a bit. So that's a problem. Uh, and the other, and this is probably the biggest disadvantage of the median, is that we can't really do much with it algebraically. It's actually really hard to, to calculate the median in an algebraic way, right? It's not just add the numbers up and then divide by the number of numbers. Um, it's, it, it, there's no algebraic piece to the median, at least not in a meaningful way. So remember the primary advantage of the mean is that ability to manipulate it algebraically. Um, this then becomes a primary disadvantage of the median then and, and its, its lack of stability. Um, so there are uses for the median, especially if we are describing a data set that has very extreme values. Um, that can be useful, uh, and, and so it gives us a better sense of the whole data set, whereas the mean will be affected by uh, the data set in, in some way. Um, and so the last one is the mode, right? And again, the mode is the most common answer. Um, it is uh, the, or the most frequent answer, so the answer with the, with the highest frequency. And uh, the primary advantage of the mode is we can use it with nominal data, right? And so I've already built up this hierarchy. So interval ratio data, we're really looking at the mean. Uh, with ordinal data, we're really looking at the median. Uh, and for nominal data, we are looking for the mode because the only thing we can do there really is do counts and frequencies. So the mode becomes uh, very important. The other thing that's nice about the mode is it tells us about how most people answered. Right, it is the primary answer, and so it's that can sometimes be useful, at least in a in a qualitative sense. It can be useful to know what the most common answer was, and we get that answer from the mode that we don't get it from the mean uh, or from the median. Also, the mode is not affected at all by extreme scores, so the mean is affected by extreme scores. The median slightly, but not really. The mode not at all, not affected by extreme scores. So, so that can be very useful. Um, the two primary disadvantages of the mode are one, it really doesn't tell us anything about anything other than the answer that is the most. It doesn't tell us much about the data set writ large. Um, it's really just about this one level of the data set. Uh, and then the other thing is you cannot do anything with it algebraically. It just, it just doesn't work. Um, uh, it, it, there's just no meaning behind that. So those are the advantages and disadvantages of our three uh, measures of central tendency that we, that we typically use. Again, the mean is the one we use the most but there are times when we need to use the median uh, or the mode.